Now, in the past 15 or 20 years, central banks have become proficient at controlling the former scourge of inflation by means of inflation targeting. What they've not managed is to find a way to prevent the build-up of speculative asset price bubbles. That's because the instrument they use to fight inflation, the manipulation of interest rates, can't simultaneously be used to fight asset bubbles, a point that Guy de Bell of the Reserve Bank reiterated uh, just last week. But all this means is that as part of the move back to a more carefully regulated financial system, not so much here, but in America and in, in Britain and in Europe, we need to revert to direct controls over borrowing levels, because in the end, borrowing is the thing, excessive borrowing is the thing that gets us so, into so much trouble and, and, and can lead us, as we are now, into a very severe global recession. Thank you. A few days before the federal budget was released, I attended the opening of the Australian uh, Museum of Democracy, which is housed in Old Parliament House in Canberra. Uh, it, it was actually a great occasion with several thousand people from the Canberra community mainly, but not exclusively, gathered before the steps of that grand old house for the free concert and the official opening by Bob Hawke. It was a simple celebration of our democracy, and if you're all interested, I'd suggest you uh, might want to check out the speeches, by, particularly by Senator Faulkner, which was uh, just terrific about the, the roots of our democracy. At the Whitlam Institute, we take a great interest in Australian democracy. I mention it this evening because it struck me that it is quite an extraordinary thing that one of the most senior Treasury officials in the country, a couple of weeks after perhaps the most important budget in the post-war era, and I think a week before Senate estimates, if I'm right, would take time out to come to Parramatta to speak at a public forum explaining the workings of our economy and where we stand. It says something to me about the homegrown democracy we have, about the quality of our best public servants, of which David is certainly one, and more particularly about his generosity and commitment. And it was well worth, I think, after a long day for all of us, whether at school or at work, uh, to spend a couple of hours this evening to hear what he had to tell us. In the same vein, I would suggest that a healthy democracy depends more than ever on the diligence and integrity of our media and the determination of journalists to reveal what is shielded from us in language we can understand. And few, I would suggest, can lay such a strong claim to those virtues as Ross Gittins. I have to say that I've discovered uh, something I didn't fully appreciate about Ross over the last few weeks because, uh, as was evident tonight, there's a thriving Ross Gittins fan club amongst these high school students, a good number of whom are here tonight. Uh, teachers told us of how Ross is the only must-read as far as their students are concerned, and some, it seems, uh, must, I, I can only deduce, uh, follow Ross's public appearances because one teacher told us how her students were keen to come tonight if only to see what he was wearing. <laughs> I never imagined Ross as part of the fashionista, but, uh, <laughs> and I've never managed to get my own head around the whole fashion thing, having only discovered ties when I got this job. <laughs> um, but I can clearly uh, identify with these students' dedication to Ross's writings. He's indeed a must read and a great servant of the people in so being. And so it is my great pleasure to David and to Ross on your behalf to extend our thanks and gratitude for taking the time and for speaking to us here this evening. Thank you.